Hello there! How are you today? I am Mom Eloy, your virtual teacher. Today, we will talk about the systematic and scientific ways of caring orchard trees. For today's lesson, here is our lesson objective. Before I proceed, I'd like you to know that I do not own the pictures used for visual representation. These belong to their rightful owners. One needs to carefully plan an orchard project to avoid useless and wasteful spending. It is also important that once an orchard project is started, the proper care of seedlings and trees are undertaken. There are tried and tested procedures for taking care of these plants, from cultivating, use of fertilizer, and watering. There are ways of watering plants. 1. Natural. This is nature's way of providing water for plants through the rain. 2. Manual. This is the use of water pail and dipper or water sprinkler. 3. Artificial. Water supply is artificially produced from a deep well, dams, and river with the help of motors. There are four types of artificial way of watering plants. 1. Surface or furrow irrigation. Water is distributed to each row so is applicable only for row crops with uniform slope. The next is sprinkler irrigation. These include the line, rotating, and micro sprinklers in which artificial rain is generated through a special device that wet the entire field. Next is drip or trickle irrigation, a special water source designed to discharge water close to the plant, wetting only that area and leaving the rest dry. Sub-irrigation, this type is very high in cost because the water source is underground. Remember that proper irrigation is very important for each orchard, it may be large or small scale. It has to be done properly for the seedlings to grow healthy and the trees to start bearing fruits. Cultivating the land is practiced to help promote the growth of roots and improve aeration for fast absorption of nutrients by the soil. But what are the proper ways of cultivating the land? There are two ways. One is off-bearing, cultivating the soil in rows. Next is healing up cultivating the soil towards the base of the plant. When cultivation is done properly, the growth of the weeds can be controlled. Soil texture will improve plant growth and destructive microorganisms found in the soil will eventually die. For the plants to grow healthy, you need to put fertilizers. Fertilizer is any substance added to the soil that promotes the healthy growth of plants. They are classified in two types. 1. Inorganic. The artificial fertilizer made from chemicals such as liquid, soluble, and granular form. Organic. Natural fertilizer from decayed matter, animals, and other natural sources. Here are the advantages and disadvantages of using inorganic and organic fertilizers. What are the examples of organic fertilizers? 1. Humus 2. Manure 3. Green manure 4. Compost 5. Compost peat 6. Basket compost 7. Compost heap 8. Vermicompost and 9. Liquid fertilizer There are many benefits of using organic fertilizers. 1. It increases the yield. It improves soil condition. 
clay soil will turn porous when organic fertilizer is added. It balances the soil pH. Soil pH is the degree of acidity and alkalinity of the soil. Pulverized eggshells, oyster shell, bone meal, and any lime will neutralize the acidity of the soil. It helps the development of roots, flowers, shoots, and fruits. The use of pesticides may be necessary to protect and prevent plants and trees from getting damaged due to infestation. The following are some of the advantages and the benefits of using pesticides. Insect pest life cycle will be stopped. Infestation will be lessened. Prevents the spread of plant diseases. The growth of the plant will continue to progress. Higher yield is expected. The best thing about using organic pesticide is that it is not harmful to humans and other animals. There is no side effect to health. It can sustain the budget of growers because it is affordable. The materials are readily available within the community and it is very easy to prepare. One of the examples of organic fertilizer is a compost peat. If you have a big space in your backyard, you can try to make a compost peat. Here are the ways on how to make an organic fertilizer or a compost peat. 1. Dig the hole of your compost peat. 2. Chop your composting materials finely. 3. Add the organic materials to the compost peat. 4. Place a board over the hole if you plan to add more scraps. 5. Cover your compost with soil. Sixth, keep the compost peat wet while it is decomposing. And lastly, sow plants above the compost after it has decomposed. Now that you have an idea on how to make an organic fertilizer, here are some safety measures in preparing fertilizers and organic pesticides. Always wear the personal protective equipment such as face masks, hand gloves, apron, working clothes, and boots. Always read the instruction before doing the activity. Follow the guide of proper posture while working to avoid straining your back. Check the working condition of tools before using them. Never leave your work unattended, especially when ingredients are about to be mixed. Measure all ingredients properly and follow the correct procedures. Do not deviate from the instructions provided. Always focus on the work at hand. Avoid distractions. Avoid exposures to pesticides. Maintain a clean working place and free from any disturbances. And lastly, never forget to take a bath and clean thoroughly after working. Did you understand the systematic and scientific ways of caring orchard trees? That's good! Now, let's try to answer the following questions. How do we water plants? What are the methods of watering plants? Why do we cultivate plants? How do we cultivate the plants? What are the examples of an organic fertilizer? What are the benefits of using organic fertilizer? What are the safety measures in preparing organic fertilizer? Let's remember, when cultivation is done properly, the growth of weeds can be controlled. Soil texture will improve plant growth and destructive microorganisms found in the soil will eventually die. The best thing about using organic pesticides is that it is not harmful to humans and other animals. There is no side effect to health. It can sustain the budget of growers because it is affordable. The materials are readily available within the community, and it's very easy to prepare. I hope you learned something new today. Until next time, bye!